Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK and today I am showing you how to crochet these super cute mini stockings and they are certainly mini. So before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. Today we're going to be learning how to work the stocking in one colour, um, two colours, <laughs> adding even more colour before we go on and work the jogless join. The jogless join allows you to change colours when working in a continuous spiral, which is how the toe and the leg of this stocking is constructed. Working in a continuous spiral means that you're not slip stitching to join and doing that chain one, which can leave a seam all the way up your stocking. To prevent that from happening, we're going to be working in that continuous spiral. So one of the things you're definitely going to need is at least one stitch marker. <laughs> in case you lose one, I tend to drop mine on the floor. So changing colour in a continuous round can sometimes result in a really obvious colour change. But as you can see in this stocking here, it's not obvious at all. And in fact, it's nearly invisible. So I'm going to be showing you how to work that in this version here as well. Now the materials that you're going to need to create any of these stockings is of course one or more colours. So the total weight of yarn that you're going to need to work up one of these stockings in a DK weight or a size 3 yarn is going to be 35 metres. Now you can use this pattern for any weight yarn. So for instance here I've made one in an Aran weight yarn and when you compare the size of the stocking there's not a huge amount of difference but it is ever so slightly bigger. So if you've got a larger space to fill with all these cute stockings then going up a yarn size and a hook size can work but you may need a little bit more of Aran weight yarn than you would in the DK but you can follow the exact same pattern. Now hook wise it is entirely up to you how tight you want your stitches to be. Now this stocking here has been made with a three and a half millimeter hook and my DK weight yarn or the size three yarn actually recommends using a hook size of four millimeters. So perhaps when you're going on to work an Aran weight you could use a four and a half millimeter and it would just prevent any holes being more obvious than they need to be. So I have here my four millimeter furls and my three and a half millimeter soft grip here. So I'm going to be working up this tutorial using my four millimeter crochet hook. But if you want to go straight down to your three and a half, you can. As I said, you are going to need a stitch marker. I highly recommend marking the first stitch of every round, especially when we're working in this continuous spiral. You can, of course, opt to work just in one single colour, but I'm going to start by showing you how to work your stocking up in this two colour version, using the toe in one colour, the foot in another, the heel is then worked in rows, and then we continue up the leg working in that um, middle colour in a continuous spiral before working the top in a different colour and, of course, our little loop. Gather all of those materials, your hook, your yarn, whatever weight yarn you're using. I would recommend going down half a millimetre to a millimetre size if you can, just so you can get really nice tight stitches. You're going to need some scissors because we're changing colours, but we're not going to fasten off too often. And of course, grab that stitch marker and your needle. So this pattern is started with a magic ring, adjustable circle, whatever you know it as, a magic circle. Um, and the reason that we're starting it with that is because it will give us a perfect close to the start of our project. So to do that, well, the way that I do it is I start with my tail in my palm. I wrap the yarn around the top the first two fingers of my hand, bring it back over behind that first one and kind of secure it between my third and fourth finger. So you should have parallel lines at the front and a cross at the back. We're then going to insert our hook underneath that first loop to grab the loop at the back. We then bring it through and as we bring it up, we create a little twist. And then we're going to use, we're then going to pick up the yarn at the back. I'm going to check my hook's got that and we're bringing it through the loop on our hook. If you've done it, well done. I'm gonna go through it again because it can feel a little bit tricky the first few times that you're using it. I'm gonna give you an easier alternative in a moment as well, so don't worry. So once again, we start with our tail yarn in the front of our fingers. We wrap the yarn, I'm just grabbing it there to kind of secure it from moving too much. We wrap it around and behind so that we create parallel lines at the front. We've then got it secured between my third and fourth finger. I'm then gonna insert my hook underneath that front loop, picking it up and under with the back loop. As I bring my hook around, I'm twisting it, 
ready to grab that loop that's kind of on its own over there. And I'm just gonna bring that loop through the loop on my hook and that creates our magic circle. Now you can just relax your fingers and let it go. It's quite secure there. Um, I'm just gonna place my finger on the top because as you can see, we need to straighten this all out. So you need to untwist your tail and you just need to find the strand and gently bring it through. That means that we can then pull on that tail to tighten the circle at the end. I'm just gonna swap that back over to my yarn hand. So I'm just kind of, the way I would pinch my project, I'm pinching the magic circle ready to work into it. And I'm putting that tail yarn next to the loop so that we are ready to work with that. If you're finding that a little bit too difficult, I'm gonna show you how to make the alternative. So the alternative would be to simply make a slip knot, place that onto your hook, and you can then make a chain of four by yarning over and bringing your hook through the loop on your hook four times, three and four. We're then gonna slip stitch back into that first chain that we made, so all the way down back to where we started with our slip knot, just that chain there, yarn over, bring a loop through, and straight through the loop on your hook. This also creates a ring that you can work into. You may create a another hole just underneath where you slip stitch. So ignore that hole, you're gonna work directly into there. So whether you're using the magic circle or you've created your chain four ring, the next step for the rest of round one is going to be working 10 single crochets into the center of that ring, be it the magic circle or into this chain four circle that we've made. So we simply insert the hook into the circle, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through two. Once again, regardless of whether I'm doing the magic circle or I'm working around my chain four, I'm making sure that my tail is held against the edge of the circle so that I'm working over it at the same time. Just insert the hook, bring up that loop, yarn over and pull through two. I'll do one more and then I'm gonna switch back to our magic circle. That means we now have three. If you're continuing working round, keep making those 10 single crochets. And if you're working around your magic circle, I'll show you now how to work into that magic circle. So once you've made your magic circle and you're ready to work your single crochets, I kind of put my third finger through the middle or any finger you've got spare, just to kind of help pinch together the tail yarn and the magic circle. And then you simply insert the hook into that big circle that you've made yarn over and bring that loop up, yarn over and pull through two, and that creates your first single crochet. If your loop is extremely big and you're struggling to kind of get some tension on it to work into it, if you pinch your stitch and pull gently, it will decrease the size of your magic circle, meaning there's kind of less to hold on to. Keep placing that tail yarn around, you know, to the side of, someone's twisted already, uh, we're going to work a total of 10 single crochets into here. So we've already worked the first one. Keep that tail yarn against the side of your magic circle so that you can use that to pull closed the ring at the end. So that's three. And four. Five. And six. Seven. Just untwisting that as I go. Eight. Nine. And ten. You should now have a total of ten single crochets worked into your magic circle or into that chain four circle. And depending on how you feel confident about this, it may be worth marking that first stitch because as you can see, it kind of disappears a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab my stitch marker and just place it through that first stitch that we made because what's gonna happen when we pull on our tail yarn, if we've worked over our tail, you can see that that circle completely disappears 
and it makes your stitches look really neat and tidy at the beginning. With your chain four, you can do the same. If you haven't been able to work around or over your tail yarn, don't worry, we can weave that in a certain way that will allow it to cinch in all those stitches nice and tightly. So at the end of round one, you should have a total of 10 single crochets. So going into round two, I'm going to remove my stitch marker. Now, instead of slip stitching and joining this round, instead, what we're going to do, we're going to work that next single crochet straight into that first stitch that we made for round one. So you can see that we have this space in between our stitches. And because we're working in a continuous spiral, we're going to start by working the first single crochet into the first stitch that we made of round one. We don't slip stitch and join or do any chain ones. We just work our first single crochet into that first stitch. So we insert the hook underneath both loops and then we yarn over and bring our loop up and then we yarn over and pull through two. So that's our first stitch of round two. Now we're going to be working two single crochets into each stitch around. So I'm tilting my project a little bit so I can see where I've already worked. So you can see that this stitch is coming out of this little stitch hole here. So I'm going to reinsert my hook into that same stitch again. Yarn over to bring my loop up. Yarn over and pull through two. Now I always make my first two stitches and then place my stitch marker back through that first stitch that I made of the round. For me, it means that my stitch sizes are more even, whereas if I fiddle around with that first stitch, it gets all loose and baggy, and we don't want that. So as I said, for the rest of round two, we're going to work two single crochets into each stitch around. And what's going to happen is this stitch before our stitch marker, when we come round to it, is going to be our final stitch with two in it. So we're going to end round two with a total of 20 single crochets. We've done the first two. So here's the next stitch. You can see we've got stitches coming out of this one. So here's our next one. So we insert the hook under both loops, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two. Inserting our hook back into the same stitch again to work out increase and adding an extra stitch, yarn over and pull through two. So that gives us four stitches. And we're just going to repeat this all the way around, working two single crochets into each stitch around. That's the next, that's the second one. There's our next stitch again. And we're going to continue once again, look for the next stitch, insert the hook, bring that loop up, yarn over and pull through two and work a second stitch into that same stitch we've just worked. So this is actually going to increase our stitch count and actually double it. So we're going from the stitch count of 10 single crochets at the end of round one, all the way up to a stitch count of 20 at the end of round two. So we just continue to repeat that two single crochets into each stitch around. Oops, moving my uh, stitch, I'm trying to fold my stitch marker out of the way. They do get in the way sometimes, but they are quite essential. One and two. So at the end of round two, you should now have a total stitch count of 20, 20 single crochets all the way around. So from round three onwards, we're going to work the remainder of the toe and go straight into the leg. So for round three, we're going to remove our stitch marker out of that first stitch that we made. And we start by making one single crochet into the first stitch and then one single crochet into each stitch around. So that was the first one. We go, I'm going to work my second stitch, ready to place my stitch marker back into that first stitch of the round. And then we continue to work one single crochet into each stitch around. If you're making a single color stocking, you can just continue without worrying about a color change at the end of round three. But if you are looking to create this beautiful kind of white toe, we're going to change to the next colour at the end of this row. So work one single crochet into each stitch around. We're not increasing in this round at all now, we're just working one single crochet. 
continue around and at the end of round three I'm going to meet you for that final stitch because that's where our jogless colour change begins in the stitch before we actually change colour. So continue around and I'll meet you in the moment for our colour change. So regardless of which colour stocking you're working, if it's the multi-tail colour one or just this two colour one, this is where we're going to work our first colour change at the end of round three. So we should have one stitch remaining at the end of round three ready to change colour. Now if you're not changing colours, you can just complete your final stitch and continue on. But for us, if you're changing colours, we're going to insert the hook into that last stitch, yarn over, and we stop here. So we do that kind of half colour change thing. I'm going to grab my next colour, which in my case is, of course, a lovely traditional red. And I'm just placing the tail over the hook away from me. And then I simply kind of grab that and pull it through. And then I can pull on the white colour. Now we're not going to fasten this off because we need it later. So we're just going to leave that hanging at the back. And there is our tail. Now the way that we create the jogless colour change is very simply, instead of working a single crochet in our first stitch of the round, we work a slip stitch. And that creates a shorter stitch than the single crochet, so it makes it more seamless. For the first stitch of round three, if you're changing colours, you simply insert your hook underneath that first stitch. I'm putting my tail over because I'm going to weave that in as, well, <laughs> as I go. You know me, I like to be nice and lazy. And then we just do a slip stitch. So we bring the loop through and straight through the loop on our hook. And that completes the slip stitch for our first stitch. Just like we did for round three, we're going to then work one single crochet into each stitch around. So there's our next stitch. So we insert our hook, yarn over, bring our loop up, still working over my tail here, yarn over and pull through two. To make things really easy, I'm still going to mark my slip stitch so I know where to work that first stitch around. We then continue around for the rest of round four. We continue around working one single crochet into each stitch around in our new colour. So continue working those one single crochets. Your stitch count should remain the same. Just that first stitch that we worked is going to have been a slip stitch. Continue working one single crochet into each stitch around for round four. And I'll meet you in a moment for round five. So I'm just working my last stitch of round four, ready to continue into round five. And you can see because we're no longer increasing the stitches, you, yours might be looking a little bit like that. Um, that's where the tails are, is where our wrong side is. So I'm just gonna flip mine out. Now I need to still pull on my center here to tighten that, that's not very tight at all. There we go, that sounds a bit better. There we go, so it gets rid of that hole. And what's happening is we're starting to create the toe or the foot now of our stocking. So you can see that that last stitch is working over the final colour change. And then for the first stitch of round five, where our stitch marker is, we're just going to continue working one single crochet around. Your stitch count shouldn't change. We should still have a total stitch count of 20. So work that first single crochet into where we work that slip stitch and then we can work our second one before we place our stitch marker into that first stitch around. So if you are aiming to work this lovely stranded colour here, um, obviously I've reversed the colours on this one if you were doing this pattern, but you would be changing colour every two rounds. So if you are doing this version, you would be changing colour again at the end of round five, ready to work rounds six and seven in your next colour. If like me, you're aiming just to work another or work one of our beautiful two colour ones, you're continuing up now, um, working just one single colour all the way. So we've already worked round four and we're going to do a total of 11 rounds for our toe, which takes us up to our heel. If you're working the stranded stocking, you're going to be working two rows in each colour and you'll work your row 10 and you'll work round 10 and 11 in your alternating colour before we change for the heel. 
if like me you're doing the whole foot in the same colour, you're just going to work a total of 11 rounds from the toe up to the heel. So it's going to be a total of um, eight rounds and we've already worked one of them. The best way to count your rounds when you're working in the spiral is to count behind your hook. So we would count from the middle, so one, two, three and four. What happens is that as you're working your round, you'll find that the bit you've just worked will have the five rounds, but the bit behind your hook is actually the right number. So when you're counting from or behind your stitch marker, it's probably the easier way to explain it. So we're looking now for a total number of rounds of 11 rounds before we change to working onto our heel. We've already worked our first four rounds, and now we're going to go all the way up till we have 11 rounds in total. And each round will have one single crochet in each stitch around. No more increases. If you're working those colour changes, you should be changing colour every two rounds. So for instance, after you've worked this round, in that last stitch, you're going to be working that jogless colour change, where you change colour in the last stitch before slip stitching into the first stitch of the next round and then continuing with your single crochets. So continue until you have a total of 11 rounds, and then I'm gonna meet you for possibly the easiest heel ever. This stocking doesn't use a, I wouldn't say real heel, but it isn't a real heel. It's not a turned heel where you work short rows or anything like that. You're, we're just gonna work some rows and seam them to create the look of a heel. So continue until you have a total of 11 rounds, changing colors if you want, and I'll meet you um, at the end of round 11, ready to work our heel. So I've just worked my 11th round. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is round 11. And I still have my final stitch to work. Regardless of whether you're doing the multi-stripe or you're doing the two color or the solid color, <laughs> solid color, you're just going to continue in the same color again. If, like me, you're changing back to, I'm going to just tuck that tail in for the moment, just so I don't get myself confused. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's ever worked with their tail. Um, to do my colour change, I've still got my white attached. So I'm just going to place it over my hook, bring it through the loop to complete that last stitch of round 11. And then we're ready to do the heel. So with our heel, it's actually worked in rows and then it's seamed at the back. So we're going to start by working row one of the heel. And we're gonna do that, for me, I'm working in the color of white. If you're continuing in just one color, you can just continue. And I'm gonna work over this tail of red because we're gonna fasten this all off in a moment. So I've inserted my hook into the first or the next stitch, and that becomes the first stitch of row one of our heel. So we, bring a loop through, yarn over and pull through two. Because of the way that this stocking is worked, if you work a slip stitch for this colour change, it actually creates quite a large hole in your heel. And that's not really that advisable. I can give you an example because I did it on that one. So you've got a hole here and we don't want that. So we're not going to work a slip stitch. We're going to work one single crochet and then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next nine stitches. So that we've done number one. So that's Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we need ten. So this is the tenth single crochet. Now, if you've worked this in the same colour, I would recommend placing your stitch marker back into that first stitch as always. Now, I've worked over this tail. I'm just going to make sure there's no, no loops hanging out here of my red, which there were. And then I'm going to fasten that off with a little tail so I can weave that in because I am done with that colour on this section. So I'll tuck that out of the way for now. And what we have is a row of 10 single crochets across. And because we're working in rows, we're going to turn our work. So I always do my chain one first, chain one and then turn. And we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across for row two of our heel. So we've done our chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. Then single crochet into the same stitch as that chain one. 
and then work one single crochet into each stitch across. And number 10 is that first one we did in our next colour. You can see that it's going to create a section of heel coming out from the toe. Now we're going to work six rows in total. So we've already done two rows. So we're going into row three. We chain one and turn and work one single crochet into each stitch across. So for row three, we are also going to have a stitch count of 10. So we're going to have a total of six rows. We've already done, this is now the third row completed. So continue until you have your six rows in total. So we've got one, two and three. So continue until you have your total row count of six for your heel. And I'm going to meet you ready for us to seam our heel together. So it's a chain one and then one single crochet into the same stitch as that chain one and then one single crochet into each stitch across. I'll meet you in a moment ready. Do not fasten off this colour. Do not fasten it off because we're going to use that to seam our heel. So at the end of row six, you should be looking a little bit like this. So if we were to flatten it, you, this is the shape that we're going to create and this becomes our heel. Make sure you keep this yarn attached for a few more moments because we're going to use it to seam our heel. So we're going to start by making a chain of one and then we're folding the heel in half. So you see what I did there? I've literally just folded it in half so that the two edges come together. And from here, we're going to slip stitch down the stitches not down the ends of the rows because that bit we're going to work into in a moment. We're going to work back through the stitches and join them together with a slip stitch. So I'll do that again because this is the bit that can get really complicated, especially when you think, oh, there we are, we're done, we just seam across there. That does not work, <laughs> so we're not going to do that. We're going to seam this edge here. But what we're doing by folding it in half by kind of pushing up, this is the wrong side of our pattern. You can see here that when it's closed, this is the right side that's facing us here, but we want to work on the wrong side of our project. So we're kind of folding it inside out. And as soon as we're here, we're ready to start joining. You don't need to turn it, don't need to do anything. If you've done your chain one, all you need to do now is insert your hook. It's a bit hard to see because I've used white. Underneath that first stitch, I'll move that out of the way. So through the first stitch, and then we're also going straight through that first stitch on the other side, on the other side of our stocking. And we're going to seam them by simply yarning over, pulling through and straight through the loop on our hook as a slip stitch. And we're just going to work down all the stitches working through both sides of our project. So through one side, and then through the next, ready to yarn over straight through the loop on your hook to slip stitch them together. So we need to do a total of five slip stitches. So we've done two. This is our third one. And do the same again for our fifth. And then through this little bit here, which is kind of through one stitch really, just to give us a nice neat corner. You can make a chain one to create a knot and then you're going to need your scissors because we're going to fasten off leaving a little tail to weave in. So once you've completed your slip stitching, you can simply push it through and then it becomes a sealed stocking. Now this is a really good time to take a moment just to weave in all of your ends so that you've got none of these hanging around. And then we're going to start on the leg section, which is worked all the way around this opening. So it creates that sock look and we're ready to move on to the leg and then, of course, the cuff. So get all of those ends woven in and I'll meet you in a moment ready to start on the leg. So once you've got all those ends woven in, you should have pretty much half a stocking. <laughs> so we are getting there. All that's left for us to do now, of course, is to work is to work our leg all the way around our stocking. Now, if you are doing the striped one, I would recommend picking up your colour A again so that you get this kind of nice double layered look 
on your stocking with the heel in your contrast colour. If like me you're continuing with our R2 colour stocking, I'm going to continue with my colour B. Where we rejoin our yarn is actually the first kind of row end after our seam. So this is my seam here, you can see that it's kind of flat and you've got a little hole here which is your first end of the row that we're going to work through. So we have our seam here and either side you've got those little holes and that's where we're going to insert our hook to rejoin our yarn. So I just push it through the end of that row and I'm just placing the yarn over my hook Oops. and bringing it through and this is again we're going to make a little chain one there aren't many of them one chain one just to secure it now to pull on that tail to tighten that down we're then going to work one single crochet into the end of each row and into each stitch now we have to be careful because as you can see here we have a stitch already coming out of this one and we're going to skip that and work into this one i'll give you a better look when we get there so once you've joined into that stitch you can see you've got little holes along here and we're going to work into the end of each row. So once we've joined, we work one single crochet into where we've joined. So we're reinserting the hook back into where we joined. Yarn over, bring that loop up. Yarn over, pull through two for your single crochet. There's our next end of the row. So we insert the hook, work another single crochet. We have another one here. There's another one. So we're just placing one single crochet into the end of each row. We have another one here. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Need to work, oh, there's the sixth one, just under there. So that's number six. So because we've got six rows, we need six single crochets. I've worked over that end, so I'm just going to tuck that in for the moment so it doesn't get in the way. And this is where I was saying we need to watch that we don't work back into that stitch. We're going to work into this next stitch here. So you can see where that colour change has been worked. Instead, we're going to insert our hook into that next stitch with nothing else coming out of it. And then we place our next single crochet there. So that's single crochet number seven. And we continue working one single crochet into each stitch around. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and 16. So by the time you're back to your heel again, you should have a total of 16 single crochets. And then we have six single crochets to work along these row ends as well. So we don't work into there, we're working into here. There's the end of the row. So that's one. There's the next one. Two. Three. four and then we have our final one to work just before our seam so that final one takes our stitch count all the way around for round one of our leg as 22 single crochets so we're going to continue into round two of our leg we just continue straight on working one single crochet into the next stitch don't need to slip stitch to join because there's no real hole there. So that's one. I'm going to work my next one and then I'll be ready to place my stitch marker again because the leg is worked in that continuous spiral again. So for round two of our leg, we're going to work 22 single crochets. So work one single crochet into each stitch around. And at the end of this round, you should still have a total of 22 single crochets. So continue around, I'll meet you at the end of round two of the leg, ready to discuss those colour changes for those of you that are doing your stripes 
and for the rest of us to work out how many more rounds we need to do. So I'm just working my last single crochet in round two. If you're doing your striped stocking, remember you need to change colour in your final stitch. So you'd insert your hook, bring up your loop and then add back your alternate colour. You'd then work a slip stitch instead of your first single crochet. Now, if like me, you're continuing to work this wonderful long <laughs> leg um, in one colour, you're going to need to do a total of nine rounds from the leg. So we've already done two. So we only have another seven to do in total before we change colour with the top of our stocking to create a cuff almost. It's a bit of a fake cuff. It's the same. It's just a cuff. So for those of you that work in the two colours like this, I will meet you at the end of round nine where we're going to change colour. For you stripy people, you keep going, changing colour every two rounds using your, your jogless colour change so that people can't see those colour changes as much. And I'll meet you all back for the end of round nine. So I've just reached my last stitch in round nine. And because I'm making our two colour stocking, I'm changing colour for the last three rows. If you're making your stranded stocking, you're still changing every two rows. So you continue on um, and you need to do a total of 12 rounds ready for the last round. If you're doing these two colours, for that last stitch, we're going to change colour in the last stitch of round nine. So I'm changing back and joining on my colour A that I use for my toe and my heel just by placing the tail, let me move it out of the way, the tail at the back of my hook and just bringing it through, pulling on that yarn to tighten. I'm going to work over this. I'm going to snip my red or my colour B. So we have a tail to work over and weave in. You can move that out of the way. So I've got to remove my stitch marker, ready to work a slip stitch instead of a single crochet in that first stitch of round 10. So we, again, we're just inserting our hook under that first stitch of the round, grabbing all of these ends a little bit here so I can work over them. And instead of doing a single crochet, we do a slip stitch. I pull on that white end a little bit, it will tighten everything up for us. There we go. Move the tail out of the way. And for the remainder of round 10, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around in our new colour. I'm going to grab my stitch marker to make, to work, oh, to mark my slip stitch. I have made a bit too small there, so I have to mark it so I remember to work into it, otherwise I'll lose a stitch. Uh, this part we're working three rounds in total, so rounds 10, 11 and 12. If you're making a two colour stocking, they're all going to be, well, this is going to become our final colour. So continue around, working your three rounds in your final colour and I'm going to meet you for round 13 and that's where we're going to create a little hanging loop to secure our, well, so that we could hang our little mini stockings around the house, either on the tree or perhaps create a garland. So continue around and I'll meet you at the end of round 12, so three further rounds in this colour. So I've just worked my final stitch in round 12 and I'm just going to remove my stitch marker because to create our hanging loop, what we're going to do, we're, if you imagine we're here, we need to work around to where we're in line with our seam and that's where we're going to place our hanging so it hangs nicely. So this might be different depending on how many rounds you've done, if you've done an extra round or not. So I haven't given a specific number of single crochets, but you just continue to single crochet around until you are in line with your seam. So you can see that I'm kind of at the edge of my seam here. It's in line and it's at the back of my stocking. And then all we do to create our hanging loop is we make a chain. So to chain, we're just going to yarn over and bring our hook through the loop on our hook. And you can make your, your hanging chain as big or as small as you want. I do uh, between 12, maybe 13 chains. You can make them longer if you have like a big tree or something like that, that you want to hang them on to. Just kind of assess it by bringing your hook down to 
the stitch you're working into and that's going to be the size of your loop. Once your chain is long enough, we're just going to simply slip stitch back into the same stitch that we worked our last single crochet. So we're just going to see where that came out of and insert our hook into the same stitch. Going to yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on our hook. To make it super secure, you can do a little chain one and then you simply fasten off. So just snip the yarn and bring, use your hook to bring that yarn through, pull tightly, and then we just have the last few ends to weave in. And that completes our little tiny stocking. So as I've mentioned, I'm making mine into a garland. So I have quite a few of these stockings and depending on how you want to hang them, it would depend on the number that you need. So I tend to put a space between them and obviously I'm going to mix them up a bit and make them all pretty. Um, and then I'm going to make a one big long chain and join them. So you can, I'm going to do a separate video for how to create the garland. But for numbers wise, if you're wanting your garland to have an up in the middle, for instance, so you want two side of hangings of stockings, I'd recommend doing an even number. If you just want one big long kind of garland that's going in one long dangle, I don't know what the right word would be, I would always recommend doing an odd number. It means that you'll have one in the middle that will hang the lowest, but if you're doing even numbers, it would be great to have like a pin in the middle to kind of put it so it's got two loops. If you've got a really nice large mantle or something that you're putting it above, it will look really nice in different colours. So make as many stockings as you need. For, you can just re-follow this pattern. I'm doing alternating ones, so kind of like a a plain one, a stripy one, a two-colour, a plain one. Oh, that would have to be a stripy one, and then a, a two-colour one. Um, and then we can join them into our garland. So make sure that you've hit that subscribe button and, of course, the notification bell when for when that video becomes available on how to join your stockings and create your garland. I'm going to go and weave in these last few ends and I will see you soon for the next video. Until then, keep it cosy.